What's going on, y'all? Okay, Love and Hip Hop, New York, Season 5, Episode 6, X's and O's. Look, Peter fucking Guns. Okay, so Amina, not Amina, Tara gave this um, interview with The Breakfast Club. And I see it's going to kind of play out on this uh, episode with her confronting Amina. And it just irks me so much because Tara... She just don't see the errors in her ways and see how it makes her look stupid as the same thing. You know, as the same as Amina. Both of y'all are stupid. Neither one of y'all is smart in this situation because you're still dealing with this man. Regardless of the fact that, you know, Peter is with Amina now and you had him first or whatever, you knew the situation after you found out about it and you knew that they was married and you still messing with him. You knew that they was in a relationship and you were still messing with him. I don't care if Peter was coming over there to your house and this was all last season. I don't care if he was coming over or whatever and, and, and trying to get the um, puss from you. You could have said no, but no, you gave in. So you're very much to blame too. Peter more so than anybody. Amina, she, she didn't know about this relationship, y'all. But, you know, she continued the relationship once she found out about it, okay? So that's where she's fucked up at. And then Peter's sitting there talking about some, okay, they got the baby. I'm going to come clean to her and tell her everything that's been happening. So you know the trip to Barbados? Tara was there with me. First of all, I said, wait a minute. You said you went on a business trip. This is what you told Amina. See, this is why you can't lie when you can't keep up with your lies. And then I don't even think Amina caught it, but I caught it. You said that you was going to Trinidad for an energy drink meeting that they wanted you to be, your, to be the face of. But you just said that, no, remember when I said I was going to Barbados? I took a meet, uh, Tara. Amina was like, oh my God, I just... I just don't know what to say right now. He just pisses me off. And I'm just sitting here like, girl, be fake mad all you want to, okay? Because we all know the outcome. You're still going to be with this man. And it is what it is. Like, girl, he constantly disrespects you. And he basically told you right there that he, you know, talking to her to see if they could fix things. And she was like, what if she said that, you, uh, that she wanted to go back? You would have went back to her. And then he was like, I just felt like I needed to apologize and make things right. Okay, bitch, if you needed to make things right, Peter, all you had to do was call her on the phone. If that's the case, if you want to respect and if you have respect enough for your relationship, your current relationship, all you had to do was call her on the phone. Call her on the phone or meet up. Have all three of y'all meet up and talk this shit out. You don't have to sneak off and go to a fucking private island and try to win back the other girl when your bitch is in the bed. Sorry to call her bitch, but... Your your wife is about to give birth to your child. That's stupid as fucking unforgivable. But um, that's just fucking Peter Guns. Then you know we have San Santana meeting up with Rich Dollars, and I just found it so awkward the way that they're all of a sudden good Judy's after last year he cussed the fuck out of her because she was with his bitch at the time or his old bitch, and then you know it was just. He wanted her to do the, um, they, she tasting his, his liquor line or whatever. Oh, it's sin approved. It's sin approved. Like, I can't forgive that easily. Like, bitch, you literally cussed me out on national TV. And I supposed to be, girl, this is how I know this shit fake. But, you know, whatever. You see an opportunity, you're going to jump on it. And I guess that's what Sin doing. She want to do this song. He want to bring another um singer in that he worked with, Precious Paris. They talking. They having a cry session. She talking about, you know, her brother's suicide and all that stuff. And saying that he called her and she wasn't there or whatever the fuck. You wasn't there because you was all up in Erica's twat. I'm just going to put it out there. You was writing about the wrong thing instead of what was really mattering. But, you know, they had a little moment because she was talking about her sister the precious parents girl talking about her sister that got murdered okay whatever um then we get to scene with yandy and mandisi first of all yandy was big as fuck this is editing again we know that this happened some time down the line after you know um yandy had told mandisi that she was pregnant like she told him that she was pregnant like last episode or the episode before that and now she big as hell looking like she's six months pregnant when she walked up in that kitchen and she and then she looked like she was hot as fuck underneath that wig i don't know who told her to put that mop on her head but girl don't do it again burn it bitch burn it but um she talking about, you know, Lil Yang Mandisi, they got full custody of him, and she go to pick him up from school. He not there. Basically, you know, Mandisi and the baby mama, Samantha, having some issues, and she like, we need to talk to her. He like, I'm not trying to talk to her, but if you want to talk to her, maybe you can get some sense to it. I was like, 
the fuck? Yo. Mm. So, Yandy goes and meet up with Samantha. First of all, Samantha is Mindy's baby mama. Okay. Samantha's cute. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I get it. I can see why. But, you know, meeting up when Yandy was like, she's um, meeting up with the baby mama. And because it's this show... We, I guess because it's this show, this franchise, I just suspected that, you know, especially how they dogged um, her out. Well, Mandisa was saying shit about her at the, um, you know, at the, when they was at the house, I was expecting her to be like rowdy and, you know, to have so much attitude and, you know, all this shit. But she wasn't. She was calm. She was nice to Yandy. And it seemed like she actually kind of respect Yandy because, you know, Yandy was like, it's all about communication and you guys need to sit down and talk, you know, because she just don't want all this stuff to spill over into her marriage when they get married and in her relationship. And, you know, Samantha was like, I tried talking to him. We tried talking to each other and it's like not getting nowhere. But it seems like... It, we need a spokesperson and maybe you could be the one that, you know, could communicate for him or, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, I mean, at least she trying, but it's still fucked up that you get with somebody and you make a child and y'all can't communicate. But, you know, it is what it is. Sin and Rich. They're at, well, first of all, it's Rich little, um lounge party or whatever for the launch of his um uh, uh, liquor line. And she invites, of course, Sin because she the face of it. Rashida Ali, Majel, Eric Kamina was invited too. Rashida Ali comes up like, oh my God, what you doing? And you got sitting here, you the this and that. Rashida Ali, I, I, I realize she's like an instigator. Like, you know, she just want to be in the know of everybody's business and put her two cents in. And she's a little messy. And I'm just like, girl, go sit down somewhere. And then all of a sudden, you know, she wanted to kiss on Sam. Hey girl, how you doing? Then here come Erica. Erica is like, you know, since these two bitches want to get together and I'm going to come to the festivities drunk drunk as fuck she gets to the bar and she like give me that 79 and then that i'm like girl chill out and then you what the fuck i'm like girl chill the fuck out it's not that serious and she goes over to sin and er uh sin and rich and start talking this shit Oh, so you got her on, the, um, what is this, the 79, 49, and all that stuff, you know. Um, I, you know what it is, because you want to fuck my ex. That's what it is. You was talking mad shit about her last season, and now you want to fuck my ex. You want to eat her pie. And I'm just sitting here like, and I'm so glad Rich did not play into it for once. I'm on Rich's side on this shit. I can understand Erica having, feeling the type of way that your two exes are, you know, Working with each other. But you can look at it from a business point of standpoint. It's just business. Or, you know, Erica is looking at it from feelings and all that stuff. Because of what happened last year. How they used to go with each other. It would look a little strange. And the fact is, she's not over... Truth be told, she's probably not over neither one of them. Okay? And she just feel excluded. And she just feel like it's not about her. So, therefore, let me act the ass. And, you know... She just thinks so highly of herself like she is this real, real prize. And you're really not. She has an inflated ego that needs to be deflated, okay? Quick, fast, and in a hurry. And, you know, she gets up there and she's, um, give this speech. I love you, Rich, even though you want to, you know, when my exes come out here, you want to do this. My, um, when my exes, uh, get up to each other with business and all that stuff. And even though you took the, uh, the, the music that you stole from me and all this shit and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, so your main goal was to come to his sh event and try to call him out and make him look bad. But you actually made yourself look bad. You made yourself look dumb. And I'm, I'm, I'm still sitting here like, so what was the point? Because the only person that looked like the fool was you. You look like a drunken, hot ass mess who just got issues. That's what the fuck you look like. You look like a scorned ass bitch. And I'm like, so what was what was what was done here? Because he's still gonna launch his shit. Sin's still gonna be there and you still gonna be doing what? Bitching about it? Like, girl, just move the fuck on, okay? And take responsibility for your own actions. Cause hey, if it wasn't for you and some of the stuff that you've done, you played a part into this breakup too. So let's stop playing. Girl. So, you know, Rich Dollars go meet up with Chink Santana talking about something. I need to stop dealing with these young bras. 
because of the shit that happened with Erica and all that stuff, the fool that she made up herself. And, you know, in this process, Chink started telling him about what happened with Chrissy and how she basically trying to trap that motherfucker. And everybody's like, I don't care about their scenes, but, you know, Chrissy is just too damn old for this shit, and everybody needs to get their shit together. Then we get this thing with Mandisi. He's out there in Dykeman Park, you know, um, playing basketball, being a mentor to these kids or whatever, these boys. And, you know, he was basically like he's from Harlem and um, growing up, they ain't really had nobody to, you know, speak to him. And he wants to, you know, be that voice of reasoning and mentor or whatever to the young kids coming up. And he was just talking about, you know, the same old, same old. You don't have to, you know, be on the streets or whatever, you know, get your education and all that bullshit. Then Gandy comes over and tell him what happened with Samantha. And, you know, from Samantha, from Mandisi's side, it's like he's been giving her chance after chance after chance to be a mother. And she's not doing that. And, you know, he's just tired of, you know, his son coming home crying to him about, you know, why his mother won't do this and why this and why that. And so basically they just, the communication is really, it's not there. And I, and this is how you got to be careful with who you lay down with and who you fuck around and have a child with, okay? Because then you will have all these issues, all right? This is why you need to talk about this shit before you lay down and have a child with somebody. I don't care if it's an accident or not. You still need to know that person's character because look at how this bitch turned out. The stuff turned out. So send me up with um, Precious Paris. Girl, get rid of that goddamn name. It's so contradictory. You're being contradictory, okay? What you're doing is contradictory. What did Portia say? I just wanted to say that shit. But it's just so precious Paris. It's like, no, like two hood names put together. Like, come on, girl, stop playing. Stripper and a hood name put together or two hood. Bitch, Black Ink Crew come on after this. And y'all know Ashley finna review that shit because, girl, they is trifling. Puma dropped that chicken wing on the um, damn flow. That is kind of calls for, um, you know, fighting action. Like, he dropped it like, damn, bitch, and what? It's on. Um, you know, it is what it is. They so trifling, you know. But um, moving on, I hope that season better than this shit that we watching now. Because <laughs> look, I just broke into that. But, you know, since sitting down there talking to Paris, she was like, I haven't seen her since what happened at the show. And I just don't know how she feel about this whole situation. She probably confused or whatever. And they sit down. She's like, hey, girl, how you doing? What's going on? I mean, what happened? It's like I thought y'all was over and done. I was just sitting there like, what's up with the tension? You know, Erica, you know, she just does a lot. And it's like she just done to put on all this fronts and stuff like this. And she was doing this to me and she was doing that. And then she want to get up there and act the ass. And it's just like, gotta, gotta, gotta. And I gotta, 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 gotta. And I'm just sitting here like. So you really going to sit here and tell this girl all of your business of what just happened in your relationship? See, that's how shit gets started. You don't really know this girl. And I and it ain't no shade to Precious or whatever the fuck her name is. Ain't no shade to her. But they talking, Sin is taking all her information to her about her relationship. You know, relaying it to Precious as if they're besties. Like they've been friends for years. Girl, you just met this girl. And you telling her all your information. You don't know if she got a secret motive or what she going to do with it. Okay, she could go run back and tell... All these people or whatever, and you don't know if she kind of cool with Erica on the low. You don't know none of this shit. I be thinking about stuff like this, you know, because you can never be too careful. You can't trust a lot of people in this world. But I was just like over it then. And then we get to this meetup with Amina and um Tara. Amina wanted to meet up with Tara. Tara was like, you know, Amina just wanted to know where does she stand with um Peter. Are you uh done with him or what? Tara pissed me off because Tara has, just because she's educated, you still a dumb bitch. Tara has this air about her as if she's above Amina. But the fact of the matter is, you on the same damn playing field as Amina. And when Amina start calling, you know, they trying to get to the bottom of what was said about each other. And, you know, Tara probably was telling the truth that, and I do believe Peter was telling her, because we did see her last season, Peter would tell her one thing and tell Amina another. And Peter did tell her that, you know, he just got into this situation with Amina and he couldn't get out of it. He felt like he couldn't get out of it. That's fine. But for her to sit there and to be like, well, you already knew this and you broke up a family and you kept on doing this and doing that and all this shit. And I'm sitting here like she didn't feel bad about him going to Barbados with her. Even on the Breakfast Club interview, she didn't feel bad about it. And I'm sitting here like, really? Now, if the tables was reversed, 
Exactly. And I'm just sitting here like, you want her to take responsibility for her actions? Talking about something you knew he was in a relationship and if you didn't know, you found out, but you kept on fucking with him. And she was like, after we got married, Peter was living in my house. Tara was like, but she was still staying in my house. And I was like, but she was married to him. Regardless of how long you've been in a relationship, marriage trump all that shit right about now. Mina didn't really know that y'all was going on what was, um, that y'all was in this real ass relationship for this long because Peter was lying. Okay. And then this is where Tyra kind of got pissed off and she kind of got caught up because Amina pulled her card because in their confessional, she was like, how dare she try to come at me? Like she know what she talking about. No, Amina was like, wasn't you the same place? Wasn't you with him when he was with somebody else? Because yeah, that did get out. Amina, um, Tyra was dating Peter and she probably did not know about the girl, but he was living with his other baby mama when they was dating. And here come Tara the way that she justified it. Oh, but see, I waited seven years until I got pregnant. So what, you were still dating him when he was um with somebody else. You still were the other woman as you still are now, okay? You still in the same position that Amina's in now, okay? The cycle keep on continuing to um, repeat itself, all right? And you try to not to, you trying to make it seem like you're a little bit better and it doesn't apply to you, but baby, that's what happened. That's your past, own up to it. Okay, Amina is your past and it's looking you dead in your face. And that's why you got all this shit against her. I understand it, but damn, it's not really her fault. Y'all all three played a part in it. Chrissy brings her dumb ass. You see, this is why she get called dumb ass because she too old for this shit. To the studio to meet up with Ching to apologize for... To apologize for what happened and all that stuff. And then also to say some... Um, if he don't have, if he can't, if she can't get a baby soon and if he don't get no divorce, the relationship is over with. How the hell are you going to put an ultimatum on that like that? How are you going to do some shit like that? If you can't get a baby out of him soon, you know, you over and done with. Chrissy, you too damn dumb and too damn old to have this fucking stupid ass mentality, okay? This is the mentality that you have when you're in your early 20s, late teens and shit like that. Not when you probably in your late 30s, damn near 40s, probably early 40s or whatever. You should have all this shit together, okay? You should not be thinking about shit like this. You should not be trying to force a man to have a baby with you who is clearly not ready to have a baby with you. He is not even out the last relationship. Then you want to get mad because of what he said, uh, if I get a divorce. That should have been a telltale sign that it's been time for me to go. This man don't want me like that. Like, come on. And he read the fuck out of her. He was like... You know, when the frequency don't line up, you got a frequency up here and a frequency right here. And then you got that static right here. I said, Chink, you better read her ass. It was just, it was well-deserved coming from him. He went in. Then you got um Mandisi and Samantha beating up because, you know, at this current time, there's like no child support. And, you know, if they can't communicate stuff out, it's a possibility that they're going to have to go to court. And Mandisi's whole thing is like, she wants a set, you know schedule used to have him at this time and that time or whatever man dc wants custody for right now because of the court case that he has against him and he don't know when he gonna get sentenced or if he gonna get sentenced and how long he probably gonna be away so he wants to spend as much time with little man dc because he already missed a year and he's not understanding why samantha don't see that and i'm like yeah i might as well i don't know what they should do but like i said their communication needs to get better if anything and, you know, he was like, oh, so you want to try to get custody? I guarantee you, he'll say that he want me as a daddy and um, be with me or whatever. And the only reason why the judge will probably even think about giving it to you is because of this court case that I got over me right about now. I said, shit, y'all need to get that shit together. So Erica is doing this photo shoot. Sin comes over trying to talk to her because, you know, she had this conversation with Precious Princess telling her basically she needs to, you know, have a conversation and end the shit, like, you know, get closure. And she's trying to do that. And Erica, once again, is thinking about Erica. Oh, if y'all don't fuck with each other and we done, why you going and fucking with people that I know and all this stuff and yada, yada, yada? Why you got to go with Rich and why you got to do this? How can you can't have Drake or whatever the fuck, whoever you fucking with? Why you got to have the people that I fuck with? And here's my thing. Erica is not always about you. Matter of fact, none of the is not about you. You make it about you. And you make yourself upset. Okay? Yes, your feelings are hurt. Your feelings are raw because y'all couldn't come to no conclusion because you won't own up to what you did. Yes, I did feel like, you know, sin could have went to somebody else. But it's just a business thing. Okay? 
you go to what you can afford right then and there. And if it's free and it's for charity, like Sin said, she's just blocking out the fact that she said that this record was for charity, which means nobody's getting the money from any of it. And my thing of it is, if I'm friends, we together and we have mutual friends and you have a couple of friends or whatever, just because we've been together and, um, you know, I became cool with them. And if we got this decent relationship and all of a sudden we not cool no more, that does not mean, and I would never ever put another friend or a person in that position and say, well, since we both friends with this person, you're going to have to choose who you're going to be cool with since we don't fuck with each other no more. That's what Erica wants her to do. That's what Erica is basically trying to say because she was like, oh, so you're going to take the people that just because, you know, we done don't mean that you can take the people that I'm cool with and, and work with them or whatever that you No, she probably cool with them too. It don't work like that. You know, get up off your shit, bitch. Okay. Then going to say, well, I'm completely done. And all I want you to do is forgive me for putting my hands on you. And then she walked away trying to cry. Girl, whatever. <laughs> y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode. I'll see y'all later. Well, I'll see y'all in about an hour or two. Okay. Peace.